Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture. In the previous lecture, I walked you through the theory behind Naive Bayes and we learned how can we com uh, compute the posterior probability given the prior probability along with the likelihood. Let's go ahead and review what we have done so far and let's see how can we take it a little bit further and obtain kind of our equation that we're going to use throughout the, this section. Okay. So let's recap what we have done so far. So again, we have two features. We have age on the x-axis, we have savings on the y-axis, and we came up again with two classes. So we have 40 blue points for people who are eligible to retire. We had red points who are people who are um, not eligible to retire yet. And we came up with a new point, which is we don't know which, which class should I uh, classify to. Should it be blue? Should it be red? I don't know. And the objective here is to try to make that guess using naive Bayes classifier. So what we have done, we said, okay, let's calculate the prior probability, which simply suggests that X may be classified as blue because there are twice as blue points as red. Again, here we looked at it. We have 40 points blue. We have 20 points red. We said, you know what? Let's assume that th this new point will be classified as blue because we have more blue points. And that's what we call a prior probability. The next calculation we have, we have made, which is what we call the likelihood, which is simply we go here, we draw a circle, and we suggest that X is red because there are more red points in the vicinity of X compared to blue. That's all what it is. So here we have 3 divided by 20, and that will give us that number here. And here we have 1 divided by 40, and that will give us that number here. And that's what we call the likelihood for blue and likelihood for X. These two numbers, as we have done before, which is simply the prior probability of red and prior probability of blue, which is simply dividing, okay, now I have 40 blue points divided by 60, that's for blue, and I have 20 points divided by 60, and that's for red. Multiply them together, you come up with the, what we call posterior probability, which is, in this case, we had red was more than blue, then we said, you know what, this point will be classified as red and this customer should not be retiring anytime soon. All right. Unless the, her, his or her features change over time. So X is classified as red or non retiring since it has larger posterior probability compared to the blue class. All right. This is again, we have this kind of a crash, you know, like course or the previous lecture. Let's take a look at some a little bit more mathematics and see how can we represent that a little bit more mathematically. All right, so now let's take a look at this equation. So what we have discussed before, this is simply represented in this equation. I know, I know it, there is like, you know, it looks weird, there is dashes and there is, you know, like, like weird, you know, elements here, but again, it's really, really simple. Let's take a look at it. So what we wanted to do is that we're going to calculate the probability of a customer to retire this kind of, you know, like dash means given, okay? So that's how we read it. So we say, okay, the probability of a customer to retire given his or her features. So X is simply their features. And that's why X is new customer features, which simply their age and savings. Again, I'm sitting at the bank, I'm a data scientist, a customer came in and I have, let's say my financial advisor is sitting next to me. And the customer came and tell me, okay, my age is 20 years old and my savings is, let's say, $200,000. What should I do? Should I retire or not? And that's what you do here. You say, okay, probability of the customer retiring given their age and savings or their features. Okay, and that's the first calculation. Okay, on the first kind of side of the equation. Equals to, simply put, we're going to multiply the likelihood, multiply by the prior probability, divided by what we call the marginal likelihood, okay? Again, this equation is exactly the same as the previous one. Actually, it's pretty much the same. But this one is not normalized in a way. This is not like, um, uh, when you sum up these two probabilities, they don't sum up to one, okay? Which means something is not right here. So the equation simply here, multiply, multiply simply the likelihood by the prior probability to come up with kind of the posterior probability but here we divide by the, what we call the marginal likelihood, which is Px. And that will kind of, you know, like adjust the equation so it can set the probability so it can range from zero to one. All right, let's take a look. So P of retire given X, which is this one, is the probability of customer retiring giving his or her features, such as age and savings. All right, so probability of retire, which is this one, 
This is simply the prior probability of retiring, okay, without any prior knowledge. If you guys recall, we calculated this assuming that, okay, now we have more blue points compared to red points, then that customer will going to be classified as blue. That's all what it is. And that's what we call the prior probability, this section. Px, given retire, this is the likelihood, okay, which is, again, we draw a circle, we assume that, okay, how many uh, points are within that vicinity of that point, and that's where we come, come up with the likelihood, okay? And again, we're going to take a look at, again, a practical example in the next slide. And then what we do is that we divide by what we call the marginal likelihood, which is the probability of any point added or newly added point lies into the circle, okay? What do you mean by this? Again, I'm going to discuss it in the next slide. But this is the overall idea. This equation is exactly the same as before. We just added this term, which is what we call the marginal likelihood. Let's apply this to a practical example. Again, we have our exact same example. We have 40 points of blue, 20 points of red. We came up with a new point. We draw a circle, and we're going to substitute in this equation. Probability of a customer retiring, which is probability of the customer being blue, okay, which is here, this class, given his or her features, is simply P of X given retire, which is simply you reverse them, multiplied by the probability of retire, divided by Px, or the marginal likelihood. Let's calculate them. So probability of retire, which is the prior probability of retiring, again, assuming we don't know any anything, just, just a very naive guess, we say, okay, how many points do I have? The number of retiring points divided by the total points. How many blue points, which is 40 in this case, divided by the overall number of points, which is 60. And that's why we came 40 divided by 60. We have done that before, we're good. The second calculation, which is the likelihood, which is the number of similar observations for retiring divided by the total number of retiring. If you guys recall, we draw a circle. We say, okay, now I have one blue point out of all the 40 points within that vicinity of the circle. So we divide one divided by 40, and that will give me the second calculation here. All right. The third one, which is Px, which is what we call the marginal likelihood. I know it sounds intimidating, but it's very, very simple. What we do here, we say, okay, what are the number of similar observations divided by the total number of points? Simply put, I'm going again within that circle. I'm going to assume that all these circles belong to just one class. So now I have how many points are within that circle? I have one, two, three, and four. Please bear in mind that this point is not, is, is, this is a new point. This is not considered within our training data. All right, this is kind of a, like, a, like a new point that we wanted to classify. So this is out of the game. This is out of question. We don't calculate it anywhere. So now I have one, two, three, four. Now I have four points within the circle. We divide it by the overall number of points, which is four divided by 60. Again, think of it as kind of a normalizing agent or normalizing number. So what we do here, we say, okay, the probability of retiring given X, simply put, substitute in this equation. We put four over 60 here. We put one over 40 here. We put four divided by 60 here. You come up with this, and then you come up with 0.25. Again, it's exactly the same as actually the previous one, which is what we have done before here in the past. If you guys recall, the only difference is just we added the marginal likelihood, which is Px. Now we have come up with actual probability, with actual number that range from 0 to 1, all right, which makes much more sense. All right, so now it's time for a quick quiz, okay, quick mini challenge. What I'm asking you guys to do is to please go ahead Calculate the probability of no retiring given x, all right? So I want to go ahead, substitute in the equation. Again, we have, again, another equation, but we're not going to do it for the blue class. We're going to do it for the red class, all right? And I want you to please go ahead, pause the video, and I will see you guys after the challenge. All right, I hope you guys were able to figure out the challenge. What I ask you guys to do is to simply go ahead and repeat the entire calculations again, but for the red class instead of the blue class. Let's take a look at it. So this is a solution. So obviously there is a very simple, straightforward solution. I know the probability of retiring, which is 0.25, which is what we calculated before, right? So instead of substituting in any equation, I can simply say, okay, now I have two classes. So if one is 0.25, then the other probability is 0.75, simply put. I can say, okay, 1 minus 0.25 will give me 0.75 and we'll call it a day. That's it. However, I can 
kind of reconfirm that calculation again by substituting in the equation. I'm going to say, okay, probability of a customer not retiring or probability of being a red class given his or her features equals to px given no retire multiplied by the prior probability of retiring divided by probability of x. All right. Okay. So let's take a look, take a look at it. So what we're going to do here, we're going to say, okay, probability of no retire equal to number of no retire divided by total points. So again, we're talking about red class. So we're going to say, okay, now I have 20 points divided by the overall points, which is 20 plus 40, which is 60. So I come up with two over 60. Probability of X given no retire, which is simply our um, likelihood, is simply number of similar, similar observation for non-retiring divided by the total number of non-retiring, which is simply here I have three red points divided by 20 points here, which is three over 20. And then the last calculation, which is the marginal likelihood, is exactly the same as the previous value. Again, think of it as a normalizing factor. So we divide by the, the total number of similar observations by the total number of points. So again, here we have four divided by 60. That will give me four over 60. Substitute here, you come up with 0.75, which is exactly the same as you do before. One minus 0.25 will give me 0.75 as well. All right, I hope you guys were able to figure out the challenge. And let's keep going. So we have one more slide regarding why naive. You know, obviously some people might ask why it's called naive Bayes. Okay, so it's called naive Bayes because it simply assumes that the presence of certain feature in a class is independent of the presence of other features. Simply put, I'm assuming that the age is independent of the savings, which actually doesn't make much sense. Obviously, we're expecting as you go, as you become older, it's really difficult to compare, let's say, the net worth of someone who is, let's say, 60 years old compared to a net worth of someone who's, let's say, 10 years old, okay? It's, it's, it's predicted that, you know, as you grow up, as you become older, your net worth supposedly might be, like, you know, likely, highly likely to grow as we move older, all right? And that's the overall idea is that, okay, you no, know, like, we assume that these features are independent. However, they have dependency of some sort. So example one, again, age savings, the assumption is not necessarily true since the savings might be dependent on... Um, on age, for example. Again, example two, we can say, okay, fruit can be classified as watermelon. If its color is green, they sweet and round. However, they might be dependent somehow. These features might not be independent as we think it is. And that's why it's called naive. Those features, again, might be dependent on each other. However, we assume they are all independent and that's why it's called naive Bayes classifier. All right, and that's pretty much all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, we're going to start right ahead with our first practical project. I'm going to show you how can we build a naive base classifier from scratch. And we're going to have, again, another uh, practical or portfolio project where you guys can uh, make an attempt to create or build your naive base classifier on your own. And we're going to have a full solution lecture as well. Let's recap what we've done so far. In this lecture, we just simply started with a review. And then we went out when we saw that we can simply substitute in this equation to calculate the posterior probability or the probability of being class red or class blue by simply multiplying the likelihood by the probability or prior probability and you divide by the marginal likelihood. That's all what it is, okay? All right, and then we did kind of a first equation, first math, we assume that, okay, probability of retiring given X, we just exactly the same as we have done before. We multiply the probability of retire, multiplied by the likelihood, divided by the marginal likelihood, and that will give us 0.25. And then we went through a kind of a quick challenge or mini challenge of kind of predicting the probability of non-retiring or the red class. And we saw that we have two ways of doing it. We either do one minus 0.25 will give me 0.75, or we can again go ahead here in the exact same equation and repeat the entire thing from scratch. Multiplying likelihood by the prior probability divided by the marginal likelihood, okay? When you substitute in here, you come up with 0.75, which exactly matches the, our assumption. All right. And then we learned what do you mean by naive and why it's called naive, because we assume that these two features are independent on each other. However, there is some dependency of some sort. All right. And that's pretty much all I have for this lecture. And see you guys in future lectures.